Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about buying your first speed light. Um, the aim of this video really is to describe to you some of the main features that you might want to look for if you're on the market to buy your very first flash. I see a lot of people online who don't understand what all the various different terminology means. Um, sometimes people buy the wrong speed light um, for what they really want to do and then when it doesn't do what they're expecting they get all confused and decide that flash isn't for them. So hopefully by the end of this video you'll understand what the key features are and help you make a, a more informed decision. Um, one of the reasons why is that there are so many manufacturers out there now who make speed lights. Um, they, the prices vary massively from $50 to over $400 um, and you know there's got to be a difference for that sort of price range but just looking at them it's not immediately clear. So for example these two are both made by the same manufacturer Yongnuo. Um, on the surface they are very very similar in terms of size and weight and uh, even on the back they, they do look incredibly similar. Um, the only reason why this one doesn't look exactly right is because I've dropped this one and broke the, the plastic front off it. But other than that, that you know, without you know, looking at them closely, you'd think they do the same things. However, they don't, and that leads me to the very first feature that I want to talk about, which is um, TTL. Now, there are two basic sorts of uh, flashes you can buy. There are the manual flashes like this one, and the TTL ones like this one. So uh, we'll quickly talk about what TTL is. Um, well, actually, no, let's start off by talking about what manual uh, flashes do. Um, so when you buy a manual flash, you have to tell the flash how much light to put out. Okay. So, for example, if I put this on top of the camera, I have to then, if I'm shooting in manual, set the, uh, the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO, and now I would have to choose how much flash to put out. So, and you usually do that in terms of fractions. So, one eighth, uh, a quarter, a half. The higher the, the number, the more power. So, a half power, of course, is more powerful than an eighth. Now, the problem with this is that if you are learning to shoot, um, or maybe you are at a wedding or shooting children or whatever, then you really don't want to be setting everything manually. You know, it, I know some people think that you have to shoot in manual all the time. Um, some people even argue that manual flash is the best way to learn. Uh, personally, I disagree with that because you end up tying yourself up in knots to try and set all those things before you can actually take shots. By the time you've done all that, people have got bored, children have moved on. So I personally don't like it. Um, I personally recommend, even if you're starting out, to buy a TTL speed light like, like these two. Um, what they do is, TTL stands for through the lens, and what that means is that the flash works in conjunction with the camera to try and figure out what the best amount of light is to put out. So to give you an example, um, if I put that flash on the camera and um, try and take a photograph, the flash emits a very quick pre-flash. The, the camera reads the amount of light that was returned and based on that it calculates what the correct amount of flash power is. And then the second flash puts out that amount of flash power. So in theory that should work and in practice most of the time it's pretty accurate. There are times when it doesn't get it right. Now, that's no different really from if you shot aperture priority or auto ISO. You know, um, quite often it's good enough to get you to where you want to be. Occasionally you need to, if you shoot aperture priority for example, um, adjust the compensation, you know, uh, aperture comp um, the exposure compensation, sorry. Um, and you need to override the camera settings. And it's no different with flash. Uh, sometimes it will put out too much light and you just need to dial in some flash compensation to tell the camera, hey, don't quite put out as much light as, as you were doing. Okay, To me, that saves a lot of time. Um, when I'm shooting now, I shoot in aperture priority, I shoot in auto ISO, I shoot in TTL flash. That means all I need to do when I'm taking a photograph 
is put it into aperture priority, choose which aperture I want, and that's pretty much it. And you know, save for dialing in a little bit of compensation here and there, uh, I can just go around and, and, and shoot. Now, that's a big time saver. Is that the best way to learn? Uh, it's better than the alternative, is my argument, where you're constantly twiddling with the buttons, you're getting frustrated because you don't really know what you're doing, um, you're not getting the results, and you're not looking in front of a customer like you know what you're doing. Okay, so those are the two main flashes, TTL flash, manual flash. Now, the other feature I want to quickly talk about is something called high-speed sync, uh, HSS. Now, what high-speed sync does is every camera has a flash sync speed. Uh, what that means is above the, this shutter speed, um, the flash can't fire. So on most cameras, it's 1 200th or 1 250th, sometimes it's 1 one 160th. Um, if you go above that, then you either get the black band across the bottom of the frame or you don't see the flash at all. Now, to work around this, the, um, the flash manufacturers have developed a high speed sync. So what happens is the flash, instead of coming out in one big burst of light, the light actually pulses really, really quickly. Your eye can't see it, it's far too quick. What that has allowed is that you can go all the way up to like even one eight thousandth of a second, which is the, the fastest most DSLRs can go to, um, and you will still see the power. The downside is that you do lose a lot of the power when you go enter into high-speed sync mode because of this pulsing. It, it, the camera needs a, you know, a lot to use a lot more power to do the pulsing than it does when it sends one big flash out. So what you'll find is if you're, for example, using it as a fill light during the day, you might need to move a bit closer to the person so you know less flash power is needed to uh, light the subject up. But the reason why I think this is useful for your first speed light is because the price difference isn't that much. You know, you, you're talking an extra $10, $20 maybe to buy a, a speed light that does high speed sync and it's better to have that feature than not. Quite often, especially if you're outdoors and you're trying to shoot in bright sunshine, it's a struggle to keep a low aperture and um, your shutter speed below 1 200th. So having high speed sync means I don't have to worry about my shutter speed. Uh, again, I can just set my aperture to whatever I want it to um, and fire away. Okay, so those are the two main features. As you can see here, there are lots of different speed lights and they all vary in price. Now, a lot of people say that the best flash to buy is the ones that come with your camera manufacturer. So, you know, if you Nikon, buy a Nikon flash. If you Canon, buy a Canon flash. To a certain point, that's true. You know, I think from experience, the build quality used to at least be very, very good and better than the competition. Um, as time's gone on, I think that gap's slowed down quite a lot. Um, certainly some of the Chinese brands nowadays have the same if not slightly better features and at a fraction of the price so for example the Nikon SB910 this is over $400 it does everything that you expect it, it, it's TTL it's H, high speed sync capable it can be a master sl uh, or a slave mode which are terms which you'll probably be more familiar with if you do off-camera flash now at the very basic level, the Yongnuo 568 does the same features. The only thing it's missing is the master mode, um, but this comes in around about 100 to $120, depending on where you get it from. So you're saving a lot of money. Um, you know, you could literally buy three of these, if not four, uh, for the same price as one of the Nikons. And is this flash four times better than the Yongnuo? Arguably not. Um, certainly, if you're like me, um, and you shoot a lot of weddings where your kit gets bashed about, sometimes it falls out of my bag or falls off a light stand or something. Breaking a $100 speed light is going to be a lot more preferable than breaking uh, you know, something that's cost you over $400. And to that point, really, that's pretty much why nowadays I don't even take the Nikon out to a wedding. It sits in a cupboard most of the time. Um, I keep thinking, should I sell it? But then just either never get round to it or I think well you know it's useful to use as a benchmark to compare other flashes to. Um, for the last year I've been using the Shani SN600SN and um, really like this flash for, for what I paid for it it really does the job. Um, it, it's pretty much just as powerful as the, as the Nikon I think it's a, about a third of a stop under um, but uh, 
fraction of the price, it really just delivers the goods. Um, more recently I've switched to the Godox flashes, more for the off-camera flash capabilities. This one also does a lot of the master modes that the Nikon does. So um, it does pretty much everything that the Nikon does and it has a built-in trigger in it as well. So that's why I've changed to the Godoxes. Uh, I really like them. They're not perfect, but given the massive price difference, uh, I can live with it. The simple manual flashes like the YM560s and more recently I've got the TT600s. These are manual flashes, so I've explained about those. You have to choose your, man your flash power on them. You can usually tell because at the bottom they've only got one pin as opposed to, I think on the Nikons have got four, I, I don't know how many Canon have got. So if you're not 100% sure from the description whether you're looking at a manual flash or a TTL, then just look at the bottom. Uh, if it's got one pin and it says it's compatible between Nikon and Canon, then um, it's a manual flash. Okay. So I hope um, this video has given you an insight on what the most important features are to look for. Um, if you've got any questions, then feel free to drop me an email. I'll do my best to answer them. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks a lot.